All right, there we go. So, hey guys, um, I'm coming on because I want to share some things with you guys on the financial front, um, help you guys along the way. Um, but for those who are watching me for the first time, my name is Terry Black. I am the wealth sharer. I am a financial coach, a mindset coach. I help remove the mental and financial burdens from people so they can feel fulfilled. And if you are now tuning in, I have paid off over a thousand dollars worth of debt, credit cards, student loans, um, car loans, and a few other loans. I Trying to think about it, 401k. That's it, 401k loans. Um, but yes, over a hundred thousand dollars I paid it off in 14 months. And my clients, because now I help people be able to find financial freedom and remove the burdens of debt from their lives. So my clients have paid off an average of sixty thousand dollars in six months, plus more money in up to a year and over a year. So with that said, I wanted to share some things with you guys. Um, because I'm really excited to change your life. I'm excited for you guys to better your relationship with money. And with that, that is you understanding that you have the power to control where your money goes. And that's through allocations and budgeting and, you know, some other things. But it's more than that, guys. It's it's more than that. Um but just so you know, again, I am a mindset and personal finance coach, and I'm the founder and the CEO of The Well Sharer. My mission is to remove the mental and financial burdens from women so they can live a fulfilled life and to be able to guide women through removing the limitations that are stopping them from having more in their lives. And, you know, I will say that the core values of the wealth sharer, who I am behind my company, is honesty, integrity. It is awareness and it is building community because one of the things, one of the reasons why I am named the wealth sharer, right? The word sharer is that I am really big on sharing information so other people can benefit from it because, you know, I told you guys the story of my mom that, you know, she always said that she wished there was someone who can help her, who would have been there to help her. I ended up helping her later on in life, you know, helping her set up um, her first um, high yield savings account, her first investment account, um, trading stocks, um, buying stocks for the long term and also the short term. So, you know, I'm really big on sharing information. I've helped my friends. Um, I've helped my clients. Um, I've been working with clients one-on-one -on -one since 2019 and I've helped people pay off tons of loans, um, paying other people so they can learn how to pay themselves. So, uh, with that, uh, uh, fun facts about me. So I posted the other day, but I'm gonna go through it real quick for anyone who's new joining me. I am a proud West Indian. All right. I am Barbadian. I, my mom's from Grenada. Um, I'm actually going to Barbados for crop over in a couple of weeks. I'll be spending two weeks there working and dancing and, you know, doing my thing. Um, but really it's a business trip as well. Um, we have an Airbnb, um, that I'm currently renovating um, to be able to rent out for people to be able to enjoy the island because Barbados is so beautiful. Uh, I tell people that we have the most beautiful beaches in the world. Um, and, you know, I just love going back home. I really do. I love everything about Barbados. Um, down to the food, the people, the atmosphere, the beaches, of course. Um, and with that, I grew up in Brooklyn. I'm a Brooklyn girl from Flatbush. Grew up in, um, I was going to say, I also lived in Bed-Stuy. <laughs> Ended up in Queens. Lived in Manhattan. You know, so I think I lived everywhere but Staten Island and the Bronx. Um, but I lived too close to the Bronx. I was in Washington Heights. Uh, but with that, um, I actually bought my first home at the age of 26. And when I bought the my first home, I'm going to lie to you. I was actually having this conversation with my um, driver yesterday. Um, he, I'm not even going to tell you where he was taking me. But um, with that, we were talking about, 
New York versus um, Georgia, because I live in Georgia now. And he's like, you know, everybody loves to come to Georgia, always hating on Georgia, but y'all don't want to move back to New York. And I'm like, you know, New York is New York. There's no place not in New York. And, you know, of course, the typical person from the South will say, you know, I can only go to New York for like two days. Like, they always cap it at two days. I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with New York. And he's like, you know, y'all always talk about ain't nothing wrong, but y'all don't want to live there. I'm like... You know, you got a point. I can't say not because, you know, obviously I moved from New York back um, in 2007 and um, purchased two homes in Georgia. And yeah, so I can't lie and say that he was not telling the truth. He was dead real about what he was saying um, about how, you know, we love to rep New York, but we won't live there and he ain't lying. Um, but he actually brought up a point about um, ownership that living in the South is a great way to be an owner. And I was just like, like he was just, you know, saying so many things I agree, agree with because that's how we became homeowners. I refused, guys, I refused to buy a house in New York because coming to the South, I was like, the amount of house that you can get for the amount of money was just like, yeah, there's no way I'm buying a house in New York. And, you know, one of the things that I also recognize, and I'll get to this in a different video because that's going to go down a whole nother lane, is that you have to be mindful where you buy your house. You have to be very mindful where you buy your house because you are essentially, you are... You have to be very mindful of where you buy a house because when you buy a house in a certain neighborhood, if you don't pay attention to, let's just say, going on Zillow and looking at the comps to see if the home values have raised over the years, then you might put yourself in a neighborhood that won't appreciate. And I learned that the hard way. And when I learned that, I was like, okay, to my husband, I was like, in order for us to grow our net worth, because that was when I became more cognizant of the word net worth and what it really mean, because a lot of people wasn't talking about net worth. Like, I'll say that. Like, I will say my friends and family, they were not having conversations about net worth. And I learned it. I heard it over the years, but it became more important to me when I recognized that I no longer wanted to be in debt. I recognized that I wanted to save money. And I recognized that the neighborhood that we chose when we moved to Georgia, unfortunately, was not going to help us with build our net worth. So we end up leaving. We did end up renting the property for a long time, but we end up leaving and buying our second home because when I moved, when we moved, I was like, yo, like, look at how much the house sold for and what it's worth today, right? And look at our neighborhood that we're in and look how how it has decreased because this was around the time, this was like in 20, 2012, um, we started talking about buying another home. We didn't move, buy our second home until like 20, 2015. But, you know, I'll say the neighborhood that we moved in the homes didn't depreciate it more than more than half more than half the value in and it stayed like that like when every other neighborhood I want to say in every other neighborhood um I'm not no matter of fact I'm being very candid I'm being very transparent when the more when the neighborhoods that was more um I guess I am trying to um, be mindful of my words. When the neighborhoods that had more of a Caucasian population in it, um, when you looked at those homes, those home values were going up dramatically while the black neighborhoods stayed very low. And I was very disappointed. I was not happy. I was just like, yo, we are set up to not really take advantage of, you know, market the market going up in the same way as other neighborhoods and it wasn't a matter of the square footage of the house it was just a matter of it was deemed a black neighborhood so the home values did not move up and if you pay attention you know you if you go to Zillow, zillow's the resource that i use there's you know realtor.com um there's redfin you know there's other um, real estate uh, websites that you can look and see how much the home sold for and what it um, has resold for and then also what it's worth today. 
if you look at a black neighborhood versus a neighborhood that's more mixed or pretty much all white, all, all Caucasians or anyone that's not black, you will see that there is a huge disparity. And that's how so many people are able to, so many Caucasians are able to build wealth faster than black communities because their neighborhoods go up in value. So, you know, I was speaking to one of my friends the other day and we were just talking about that because she's looking for a house and she reminded me that I taught her that. She reminded me that I was the one who now in her home search and looking for a house, she's paying attention to those comps, those numbers. And those numbers that you see when it comes to you buying a new home or the current home that you're, look, you're living in, pay attention. Um, and, you know, one of the ways I will say that you know, as a vice president of HOA, I was a, a HOA vice president for several years. You know, one of the things I will say is that taking care of your home and putting money into the outside of your home is very important. Curb appeal matters, okay? Curb appeal will help your house appreciate, but also um, putting money inside your home and not waiting to sell your house to now make the updates for somebody else to enjoy. When you are out of debt, when you are in a place of financial freedom, when you're able to control where your money's going, now you have the ability to truly set money aside for home projects that will help you be able to increase the value of your home. That is you not just, you know, um, you know, painting, it's you making, you know, changes to the cabinets or you changing out the knobs on your cabinet, like simple things that can help you change your, the in your decor, the inside of your home can really and truly help you build your value. And I just want to kind of just talk on that because your net worth is important. So many people do not understand the importance of net worth. Now, what is your net worth? Actually, I was going to get to that later, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it now, okay? So your net worth is the balance between assets and liabilities. And with assets, it is what you own, okay? It is what you own, the value of what you own that helps you to um, so that is, let's just talk about assets, right? It can be jewelry, okay? Asset can be a car that's paid for. Even though a car depreciates, if it's paid for and you don't owe anyone, that becomes now an asset, okay? So an asset is anything that is of value where you don't owe any money to anyone. When it comes to liabilities, your credit cards are a liability. Your, your student loans is a liability because that counts towards your debt. Your um, 401k loans, if you owe that money, in, I'm gonna touch on loans real quick, okay? All right, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave loans, I'm gonna leave that part for another time um, because that's a whole nother topic because people put themselves in situations um, when it comes to 401k loans. But loans is also a liability. Your mortgage is a liability because unless your house is paid in full, if you don't make a mortgage payment, someone can come and take your mortgage, okay? Like that is definitely something that people don't realize is that when you don't pay on your mortgage, that that is a liability, okay? You have to pay on your mortgage for someone to continuously not take your property, okay? Um, so with that, you have to understand the difference between the assets and liabilities because that is your net worth. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, okay? I told you guys I'm very transparent. If you've been following me for a while, you know my story. But for those who are with me for the first time, I want you to understand this. When I started my debt-free journey, when I was getting out of over $100,000 worth of debt, and I did it in 14 months, I was, me and my family, my husband and I, we were both in a negative net worth. We owed more than we actually had value, right? We didn't have enough assets. So our mortgage, our car loans, you know, um, our credit cards, um, all those things that we owed actually was 
liabilities and we were operating in a negative. So I that was one of my compelling reasons, my whys, why it was so important for us to get out of the debt so fast because you know, I didn't know the number until I actually sat down and did the math. And a lot of times people are afraid of looking at the numbers because they're embarrassed and they're ashamed. And there's all these things that stop them from getting help. And I did get help, right? That was one of the reasons why I was, you know, I, I took a shift and started doing something different because we actually found someone to help us face the numbers, okay? Because I'll say this, a lot of times people are unhappy paycheck to paycheck. Um, they are unhappy when they look at their bank accounts. They are not thrilled about where they are in life and financially, and they will continue to ignore it over and over and over until their back is against the wall and until they have no choice but to deal with it. And I'm here to tell you, do not wait until your back is against the wall, until, you know, you may lose your um, you lose your income or you are, um, you know, really struggling, student loans is a barrier for you. Yes. Student loans. Okay. So one of my clients, I, I helped her pay off one of her student loans, like within a couple months, another student loan, I think we paid off in a little less than a year or maybe a year. And I'll say this student loans, people hold on to student loans for like 30 years. And the fact that I was able to help her through her student loans in a year speaks to what I what I say I do, okay? And, you know, what I've done for myself is what I replicate for my clients. I, you know, am that business owner. I am that coach who are, is not going to string you along when it comes to managing your help, helping you manage your finances. I'm going to help you dig out of that hole. And when I'm helping you get it out of that hole, we're covering it back to make sure that you are not dig digging a hole again, as long as you're with me, okay? Because that is the one thing, that is the one thing, student loans, that people ignore. And because it's like, oh, I got 30 years to pay it back, you hold on to it forever. And I'll tell you, when my client paid off her student loan, she was so excited to have that off of her because she paid it off in years, okay? I changed her trajectory of paying it off by years. I'm not talking five years, 10 years. I'm talking 30 years, okay, of paying interest. Yes, right now people are not paying interest, but at some point, you guys will have to part, start paying interest again, right? That's just what it is, right? But think about all the years you're paying interest, and it seems like the loan is going nowhere. And I remember her telling me, she's like, yo, she's like, I really don't want to. I was just like, you have to. <laughs> Feel free to ask me any questions. Um, she she was just like, I don't want to pay it off. Like, and I was just like, you have to. Like, once we pay off your um, your credit cards and your car. I know there was like a small student loan. I think we paid off first before her car. And then there was a, another student loan. I think it was like $90,000 that we paid off. Um, was it that one? Like she had like over $100,000 worth of student loans. And um, we, it was, it was a, it was something that she was able to breathe better because she knew that she no longer had that student loan to pay back. And a lot of people don't like to count it. Like I know people like to ignore it all day, every day. They like to say, you know what? I'm going to act like it's invisible. And I remember going to work, not feeling, now this is back in 2016, 2017, um, 20. 18, I want to say, 2018, was it the year we got out of debt? One of those years, I would say, I remember going into my nine to five and I remember hating my job because all I could do was think about like when payday came, the money was not mine. And that's the one thing that I help people do is that I help people be able to enjoy their paycheck. Okay. When you get paid, I want you to say, okay, I'm going to take 
X amount and I'm gonna spend it. It's gonna be my, you know, my housing, my food, shopping, getting my nails done, my hair done, you know, getting all those things. Maybe also, and I'll, you know, maybe also, you know, um, getting a housekeeper or whatever it is, right? And then the, you know, X amount of percent, you know, maybe 30 or 40% you're actually saving. Um, we save, uh, we save at the minimum 20-ish percent, maybe more. And sorry, that's just towards our retirement. We save more on our savings and then we save more in our HSA. Um, so we save in different ways. And then we also um, have stocks and stuff like that. So, you know, we've taken a huge portion of um, money over the past couple of years because we've been able to get out of debt, um, past few years, sorry, to be able to get, since we got out of debt and was able to throw it into buying stocks and becoming a shareholder in a company and being able to invest more into our retirement and max, you know, add more to our HSA savings account. Um, so when we are spending money for medical expenses, we have that money already put aside. And a lot of people don't know when it comes to HSAs, uh, if your company offer it, it's one of those things where you that money is yours. A lot of people do not know that about HSAs. Those are health savings account. The money that you put aside from in your HSA that you do not use get rolled over year after year. And when it comes to retirement, that money is all yours. I remember, um, I remember someone telling me about a guy who left um, his company with like forty thousand. Um, I think he might have started like contributing to it at a late age, but he that forty thousand dollars was all his um, for retirement, and it's another way that you can build wealth. You can build wealth through retirement accounts, through you know. Um, health savings accounts through stocks for the long term there's so many ways that you guys can build wealth but before you get to the wealth savings i want you guys to understand how to budget your money and understand the importance of budgeting your money because you know i have heard someone say that you can't get out of debt from a budget and i'm, I'm like you lying <laughs> You was lying because that's how I was able to get out. And that's how my clients have been able to get out of debt because I have been the one to manage their money so they can get out of debt by giving them a budget. That's exactly what I do because a budget is a, a way for you to control your money because when you are understanding where your money's going, which is what I help my clients do, you know, for the people who work with me who don't want to do it on their own, they want someone to help them be accountable. They want someone to help them, you know, tell them where their money to go. And they want someone who actually have been through the process themselves and have so many success stories that they want some me to be able to do that for them. And like I said, I've been working with clients since 2019, one-on-one, -on -one, helping them get through their debt so they can be able to have financial freedom because there is something to be said about not having to pay anybody back when you get your paycheck. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, there is something to be said about seeing your, your full paycheck and knowing that you get to do what you need to do in order to um, get out of debt. How long did it take your client to pay off or just, or was it her plan? So my clients who all work with me, um, and let me read your question again. How long did it take your client to pay off 100000 in student loans? And what was her plan? So it took her over a year. And like I said, it was like loans that was $30,000. Like it was over $100,000. But of course, you know, the term of it was 30 years. And with my clients, with all my clients, they all get a customized plan. So with that... I'm not focused on just student loans. I'm focused on all of their debt. So it includes the credit, because remember, she also had a car loan that she paid off. Her car loan, oh my goodness. I wish I had her file pulled up. Her car loan, um, I'm like, where do I have her file? 
her car loan was, I'm trying to think if it was 20 or $30,000. And we paid that off in a short amount of time as well. Um, but I paid off her car loan um, before we paid off, she had three, she has three student loans. So I paid off her car loan before I paid off one of her second student loans. Um, and so how I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients, and I'm actually changing my program because I'm going to do a um, segment, a, a, a program for those who want to have like a money audit. So the money audit is me doing a deep dive. So the reason why I'm doing money audits, because I do this actually for a billion dollar company. So with that, and let me see if I find her, um, let me find her file real quick while um, I talk. So I actually run audits for a billion dollar company, a $9 billion company. And I run audits for, to be able to help them save money and get money back um, that they are overspending in because what happens is that contracts are signed and no one is has been paying attention to the contract terms and the pricing. So I run audits. Um, I I run audits for them to be able to um, to do analysis and helping them understand how much money that they have lost. And then I also get the money back from the suppliers as well. So that is um, something that I do for corporations and I also do it for personal finance, um, for personal, um, for women to be able to get out of debt. So because I'm an expert when it comes to audits, I, and actually it's pretty much what I've been doing since 2019, um, what I'm doing is Wrap, given an option outside of the one-on-one -on -one coaching to give someone the opportunity to have a money audit done, which is me doing a deep dive into their finances, into the expenses. We, we, we going all in, <laughs> all right? We're going all in. And with that, I am creating strategies and giving, showing them the opportunities that they have to be able to have more money through debt repayment and through organizing their finances. So those that's another way to work with me one-on-one -on -one because that's gonna be us meeting at a private location. It's gonna be a whole experience. We're gonna sit down one-on-one. -on -one. We're going like in person because I typically do all of my one-on-one -on -one clients virtually. But with this money audit, you know, I'm gonna be able to sit with the person and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about finances. We're gonna dive into the numbers. We're gonna dive into the expenses. And, you know, there may be some bonuses I might give as well. Um, but with that, it's gonna be giving money audits to be able to help people find more money because sometimes it takes people to get someone from the outside looking in, right? So what I do for the $90 million company, you know, it's not the CEO that's doing it, it's me who's doing it, right? So they have a quote unquote third party person looking at their, their a particular contract to be able to um, help them, their bottom line. Um, where are you located? I live in Georgia, but um, depending on the situation, you can either fly to me or I can fly to you. So um, to do the mon money audit. So that is an option um, depending on where um, the person is um, and how accessible it is. You can come to Georgia or I can um, meet you. But um, the preference is probably to come to Georgia. It'll be a whole experience. We're going we to sip and drink and do the money audit. <laughs> Um, yes, we, we, we going to sip on, sip on some findings. And when I tell you, I love what I do, I love what I do because the, the satisfaction in seeing my clients be able to breathe because they don't have that financial debt anymore, um, is definitely something that makes me feel good, which is why I do what I do. I do what I did. So I'm going to jump into my story. Um, I kind of went into the net worth on purpose because it's something that the black community do not think about. The black community do not, not, not focus. They do not focus on net worth at all because it's something that was not necessarily 
a subject amongst friends and family. So with that, you know, I definitely want to, um, I definitely want to kind of, you know, give people the opportunity to learn something different and to know that you have the ability to get out of debt, regardless of what your circumstance look like right now. I want you to know that you can be in a better place, especially when you find someone to help you do what you need to do to get out of debt. That is the most important part because I'm going to say this, right? You've been spinning your wheels for a long time. I had to find someone to help me realize that I was doing something wrong. And because I've have been helping corporations with budgets for over 10 years, you know, that's what I do. I love numbers. I love budgets. I love an, an, anything analytical. So when it comes to being able to look at someone's process, I'm also a process person. That's what I also do for this $9 billion company is that I set up strategies for their organization to be able to be more strategic in how they're managing their contracts and how they're managing their sourcing process and how they're managing their negotiations with their vendors. I am a top negotiator. I've negotiated with CEOs. I've negotiated with, um, I've negotiated with VPs. I've negotiated with like high executives and I've been able to save on contracts five million dollars or more you know there are you know the small the small small amount of money that i've been able to um recoup in terms of savings but this is what i do i've been doing it for a number of years but my goal is i want to be able to help the the person that looks like me their family to be able to build wealth. So yes, I can do it for a, bill, a $9 billion corporation, but what my goal is, is to be able to bring this to the black community for us to be able to know that we can build wealth when we are cognizant of the ability that we have within our own minds, okay? So that's one of the things, right? You have to recognize that you have to shift, right? If you want to do something different, sorry, if you want something different in life, you have to do something different. That's just facts, right? So you have to recognize that you are um, doing the same cycle over and over and getting the same results. And sometimes you have to find someone who's done it and pay and invest in that that person and also yourself to get different results. Because I'm gonna tell y'all something, um, you can't get nothing for free that's going to truly build wealth. That's the truth. And that's where a lot of the black community needs to shift from because, you know, I think for me, what I've heard is I don't got it, right? People are like, I don't got it. Understand that is a mindset. When you say I don't have it, that is you saying, this is just water, y'all. I'm just moving it from what I drink my, I drink water out of a wine glass. So um, I don't want y'all thinking I'm over here sipping on anything. Um, that's how I drink my water. If you've been with me for a minute, you know I'll be drinking my water out of wine glasses. Um, but with that, um, you know, people, we have to get away from the whole I don't got it or not wanting to invest in ourselves because that is what's going to change our trajectory um, to be able to, sorry, I'm over here plugging something in. That's what's going to change our trajectory and um, really be able to build wealth in a different way, different from what we have learned because, um, so I'm just wondering why something's not charging. Um, be able to build because we see our friends and family doing the same thing all the time and we keep talking about all the things we want to do but no one's actually doing the work or wanting to put the money in because we, they're so afraid of giving somebody else money and it's just like well how do you expect to grow let me tell y'all something these people the, i've i have scouted i think that's the best way to say it. i've scouted wealth these wealth investment companies who say that they're helping people pay off debt because they want to be able to manage their wealth profile. Let me tell y'all, they are one, they're, they're charging, um, the amount that they're charging, they're only, they're giving people a plan for them to go and figure out on themselves until they're able to get to the point where they're it's worth them being able to manage their wealth, right? Now, for the person who 
don't have a hundred thousand dollars sorry not even a hundred thousand dollars for the person who don't have you know three hundred thousand dollars or more in their account they don't see them as valuable so what happens is that the you know people who want to become wealthy stay stagnant because they don't have the help what I'm doing is I'm helping people be able to get to it, but I'm not just helping people. I am giving them the information that literally changed my life and I'm giving it them, to them in a way where it's going to change their lives. So that is definitely one of the things that makes me different from other people is because I am not going to waste your time. <laughs> I'm not going to waste your money because I don't want nobody wasting mine, okay? So that is one of the things where, you know, the value is, one, I've paid off over $100,000 worth of debt myself um, for my family. Two, my client success, they on average have paid off $60,000 um, within six months, more than $60,000 in a year plus. Um, and... You know, I've done it for a billion dollar company. You can go on my LinkedIn. Um, you will see Terry Black. Look it up. I, you know, I have helped, you know, a nine billion dollar corporation be able to, you know, save millions of dollars. And that is the one thing that, again, I feel like I'm doing it for, a, I'm doing it for a company that's already wealthy. I'm doing it for, because the company is family owned. So, I'm doing it for a family that's wealthy, okay? I want to be able to do it for my community to help them be able to build wealth for their families. And from all the knowledge that I have gained over the years, not just in my journey, but being able to be at the table and be able to, you know, brainstorm and bring strategies to a billion dollar corporation I want to do it. I'm sorry. I'm not, not want to do it because I'm doing it with my clients. I'm doing it for us um, because it is important for us to be able to understand that we have the opportunity once we are able to walk away from fear, once we are able to stop being embarrassed, once we are able to really understand that you have to invest in order to reap, right? You know, you have to sow in yourself and you know, sometimes that requires you, you know, investing outside of yourself to be able to have someone help you do what you want to be done. So my client goals have been to one, um, I would say was to, yeah, get out of debt is like the goal, right? But one wanted to be able to buy her second home and rent out her first one as income. She tells me to this day, she could not have been able to do it without me, okay? Because I've been able to help shift her life. You can go and look in my videos and you'll see, you know, the clients that I've spoken to, the ones that are willing to get on camera because not everybody likes to get on camera, right? Because I'm not necessarily work, like I do have a business owners, a business owner that I work with, um, but a lot of my clients are everyday people. They are working class and they don't necessarily like being on camera. Like, you know, a lot of people don't. Um, but if you look and see the testimonies and then also my website, I have testimonies from other people as well um, who've worked with me since 2019. So, you know, I'm doing something different. I've been saying that from the get go because I recognize that there are programs out there where people are um not necessarily getting what they should be getting right and i sat with uh, a multi-millionaire a few weeks ago and you know he told me that you know what i have is solid because it's literally the 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 middle point between mindset and money in the way that i'm doing it now only my one-on-one -on -one clients get the mindset and the money part um, what I was saying about the money audit, that's just strictly money, right? That's just strictly for the person um, who wants want to get out of debt more than they want to work on their mindset. Um, and it's not a bad thing. It's just that's just some people are just more concerned with their finances because, yes, they recognize that they have a mindset um, opportunity to, you know, change their language and change how they speak. Um, but that takes time and you have to 
being ready for that shift because working with me, I'm going to challenge you on how you speak about yourself. I'm going to challenge you on how you speak about other people. I'm going to challenge you on being more generous. Um, but being coming more generous also works with getting out of debt because when you tip someone more or you are, you know, tithing more or you're donating, you know, however it is that you want to be generous with other people, that is part of wealth. That is what the wealthy do. They are very generous. And I'm thankful that God has allowed me to sit at the table with other wealthy people because it helps me be able to continue to see that the mission is in serving is to be generous. I do this because I love what I do. I love being the wealth sharer. I love sharing information. I love helping people be able to get out of debt. I love being able to help change someone's tra trajectory because they were supposed to pay off debt, you know, in 10 years and I paid it off in, you know, two years or less, right? So, you know, there are things that I can pay off very fast depending on, you know, someone's income, but it also depends on how much they're willing to sacrifice. And, you know, my clients, I make sure that, you know, they are able to still live a comfortable life, right? Um, there may be some sacrifices, you know, here and there, but it's nothing that's going to make them feel like they are pinching pennies or they are, you know, having to struggle. I want to remove the struggle from people because it's one of the things where when people are in a struggle, they are in mental bondage. When people are in a struggle, they are not happy. They're waking up and they're going to work and they're unhappy and they're just speaking negative in their life. So that's when I talked about me being able to shift some people mind mindset. I am a mindset and a money coach, right? I am both for a reason. You cannot when, and this is for the person who's ready, right? Because it's a, it takes time to get to the point where you recognize you need to change your, the words, change your thoughts, right? It takes time. That's not something that happens overnight. It requires you to become more conscious but it's you become more conscious day to day when you are deliberate about it right when you have determination to really truly do something different i started my journey many 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 years ago so for me it's easier for me to manifest things i manifest things all day every day a lot of people don't realize that they actually do the same thing, but the thing that they're manifesting are more negative than it is positive because they're so stuck in thinking that they have all these limitations when limitations is just a test to see if you're willing enough to be strong and be confident enough to know that you are de deserving better. Um, I can dive into this conversation and zone out and talk to you about mindset all day because it is the one thing that makes people shift is the one thing that brings people happiness when someone is willing willing is the key word when someone is willing to be able to understand that their life can be so much better because they're willing to speak about it better and willing to talk about people better and willing to share and willing to remove certain elements from their you know their psyche from what they're consuming whether it's mentally or you know on a health level, you know, what they're putting into their bodies and their minds, when people are really able to understand that that shift is going to help them in ways that they not have not ever imagined, that's when their life will start to change. That's when things will start to work out for them much better. That's when they can wake up and be happy. That's when they will learn to be grateful for all that they have. That's when they will be able to speak with other to others with kindness. That's when they are able to forgive without having to say, I'm not going to forget. That's when they will be able to just really truly move through life knowing that it's all within their minds and it's all within themselves. So what I do at this wealth share is one of the things that I love doing so much because to be able to change people's lives and to be able to really help someone shift their mental, their psyche, the things that they're saying and the things that they're thinking, but also be able to couple that with finances and help them be able to shift through ways and just obstacles with ease, you know, that is why I do what I do. That is why I love what I love. 
um, when it comes to being a wealth sharer and helping people be able to become more successful, not just through finances, but through their own thoughts. So if you have a business out there that you want to start and it's been nagging at you for years, you know, I want to help you be able to push through those obstacles. If you want to be able to, you know, save your first $10,000 or save your first $20,000 or $50,000, whatever the number is, I'm going to help you get there. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to help you get there. And that's what makes me a different coach because they are people who may not, that may not be what they want to do right now because they are caught up in other things. For me, God has given me this platform, the Name the Wealth Sharer, my um, ability to connect with other people other people to be able to help them shift in ways that they have not imagined. So I don't mind being different. I don't mind giving someone else something different from what they've received before because you are deserving of better. And when you recognize that you are deserving of better, you're going to do everything you can to also do what you need to do to do the work. And when I say that, that's what my clients are required to do. They're required to do the work. I am the one who gives them the plan, but it is my client that is going to be the one to follow through on the plan. And I cannot do it without my clients. I can tell you all day what you need to do, how you need to speak, how you need to spend your money but if you're not willing to put in the work then it's not going to work okay that's literally what it is right if you want something different in your life you're going to have to do something different you're going to have to step away from what your friends and family are doing you're going to have to step away from what they're saying you're going to have to step away from anything that's negative that they've told you that you can't do you're going to have to be the one to do something different and that's exactly what i have done over this time when I decided to get out of debt, when I decided to pay off over $100,000 worth of debt in 14 months, my friends, some of them said things that made me feel like I wasn't able to do it because they were the ones who it was not something that was important to them. You know, sometimes there are people who grow up in the mindset of, Debt is good and debt is always good and you need to go to your grave with debt. And I knew that I did not want to do that. I knew that I want to be able to pass multi-millions onto my children and they are on that trajectory. I knew that I wanted to be able to, you know, invest and look at my bank accounts and look at my my, my um, investment accounts and feel happiness. I knew that I want to be able to travel the world and feel great about traveling and stay in luxury spaces. I knew that I wanted to do something different. Let me tell y'all something. I would not have been able to go to Bora Bora, Fiji, Tahiti, um, Hawaii a few times, actually several times, Alaska, Germany, Spain, Morocco, Italy, Germany, you know, um, Amsterdam, um, Paris, London, um, Costa Rica, Belize, I could keep going, Bahamas, um, a private island off of Totola, um, Barbados several times because I'm from there, but, you know, just going, um, you know, but I would not have been able to manifest those trips, those trips that I've taken with myself, my husband, my family, my children have traveled the world. The reason why they traveled the world is because I wanted to do something different from people saying, I'm going to wait till I get time 65 to travel. No, I'm going to travel. I started traveling when I was we were 20, let me see, we were, we started traveling a lot when we were like 20, when I was 28. I'm 40 now. I'm a proud 40 year old. I have no problem telling them, sorry. Oh, I'm 41. I done turned 41 last month and forgot. Um, so, you know, I would not have accomplished all those goals if I did not choose to be different from my friends and family if i wanted to stay the same then i would not have i would not be doing what i'm doing today if i wanted to stay the same i would not be running a business if i wanted to stay the same i would not be traveling the way that i do my children would not be you know doing the things and experiencing life the way that they are they've been around the world they've touched other cultures and i want that for you guys too i want you guys to realize that you have the ability i've my husband and i have been on a plane and we were the only black people on the plane okay my husband and i have been on the plane several times and we were the only black people on the plane when we showed up to the over um over the um, water bungalows in tahiti and in bora bora i'm gonna already speak to the one in bora bora because when we landed we stayed in tahiti for a few days before we went over to bora bora and when we took the plane we landed on a very, very small island. And that small island, we had to take a boat to the hotel. 
when I tell you that it felt like everybody dropped their forks. <laughs> I'm like, why y'all stop eating? Yeah, we black and we here. <laughs> I would not ever, like the sound is still in my head. Uh, it, every, it sounded like, like if the music stopped playing, if it was a DJ, the music would stop playing. That's how we, and we, it was nighttime too. We took this high speed boat from the plane um, to the hotel. And, you know, we didn't know what to expect. So we were, you know, just, you know, just going with the motion. And when we were going with the motion, we end up, you know, again, going, getting off the boat and they, 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 you know, we got off the boat and there were people there and they, you know, put these um, flowers over our heads. And then we walked in, well, where we walked in wasn't the front of the hotel. It was through the, um, the dining area. And Fiji is like a huge vacation, vacation spot for um, a lot of people from Europe and from Australia. And wait, no, I'm not thinking about Fiji. I'm thinking about Fiji. No, I'm not, because we went to Fiji as well. When we, Bora Bora is a big vacation place for, um, from people from Europe, right? So I feel like Australia too, because um, I feel like we met an Australian couple. Nope, that was our Fiji trip. We went on we went on this private tour with an Australian couple. But anyway, when I tell you that when we got off that boat and we walked through that dining t that dining area, that it felt like everyone there was staring at us. <laughs> But what's interesting is that I'm gonna tell y'all I manifest that because I I told God many times I want to be in the room where we were the only ones, and I wanted to be in the room where we were, um, there showing that we can be there too. I want to be there too. So that's one of the things where you know I want people to understand that they really have the ability to do something different. They really have the ability to to have something different in life when you make it important, right? So when you understand your why, when you understand that you need to stay focused and you might need an accountability partner, you might have to pay for one. That's not a problem, right? That should, that, that, that is, um, it's normal, right? It's normal for those who are wealthy. Let's say that. Um, when you recognize that you um, have to do something different to get something different. That's when your life will change. So I'm going to leave you guys with this. Faith can take you where you need to be. And when you recognize that faith can take you where you need to be, you will move mountains. All right, guys. So I pray that you guys all have a beautiful day. I pray that you guys are able to acquire the true happiness, joy, I pray that you guys can acquire the, the prosperity, the wealth, um, the abundance that you really seek in your heart. And I pray that for you guys each and every day. Um, but I want you to hear that I'm praying for you guys when it comes to that. Because me and God, we like this, right? So um, I like to send my prayers out to um, for my um, for my community, you know, I, I see you guys as my community. I see you guys as um, the reason why I am here um, to help you guys do something different in your life. But remember, faith can take you where you need to be. Um, and it's the need to be. Ooh, that part. Mm. Um, I'm going to quickly touch that for a second. Actually, no, I'm going to make that into another video. Remember, faith can take you where you need to be. Um, and remember the focus is on the need to be, um, that is what's going to change your perspective when it comes to life. And you recognize that you have a place where you need to be, but it's faith that's going to get you there. All right, guys. So I pray you all have a wonderful day. Um, if you are, um, seeing this video now, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to upload it so you can catch it. Um, cause I want you guys to be able to be in a position to have better and do better. All right, guys. So talk to you soon. Bye.